Uh, then we get into the nesting boxes. And the nesting boxes are really neat because each box is made out of the core from the previous box. So this box was made out of what I cut out of the inside of there and so on down the line. In this case, since I started with a, a really big piece of wood, I was able to make four boxes out of it. What's really cool is there's virtually no waste when you make a box like that. Here, this was, I think this was number one. This was the very first bandsaw box that I ever made and it's made out of lace wood. And what's nice about these curved lids is that they will automatically fit quite well, which is good because you'd be totally unable to cut them out of a separate piece of wood. This was one of the early ones too. This one was made out of Bodark or Osage Orange. Lovely wood, lovely color. And I cut the inside in a, in a different kind of form and then this was pretty early on in my experience, so I was able to just get one box cut out of the uh, interior pieces. The other one, mm, he bit the dust somehow. Before you use any of the tools, be it the bandsaw or the belt sander, uh, always check it for square before you uh, make any cuts. Uh, this is a, a nice square because it stands up by itself. It's not a very expensive tool, but I like it a lot. Um, and go ahead and sight along. Look in between there. See if there's any kind of a gap at the top or the bottom. If it fits nice and snugly up against the blade, then you've got it just right. I've got some corners in here, relatively sharp corners, and uh, if I wanted to get really worrisome about it, I could bring out a little circle template and draw a little radius in each one of those corners, or I can just trust my eyeball, and as I'm cutting around with the bandsaw, just kind of round those corners by not cutting straight into the corners. Anytime that you can adapt the design of your box to fit the tool that you're working with, you're going to be better off. So now I'm going to switch over to the small bandsaw. I'm also going to take this piece of wood, which I've cut from a, a very similar piece of, of maple, and I'm going to take the other end of the box, the part that is going to be on the top, and flip it over. Again, I'm going to match up the registration mark with the mark I've put inside there. Once I've done that, I can trace around the inside of that, so that when I glue this part, and I can put a T.O.P. on here because that's going to remind me that that's what goes underneath the top. It gets glued in place. If I have all of the registration marks lined up, when I'm done, everything should fit really, really snugly and beautifully. All right, I've, uh, I've taken my clamps off and I've looked at my box, put it together, and 
by golly, I've got a pretty good fit there. Uh, that's going to work just fine. My next job is going to be to take it to the sander and I'm going to square up my edges. You can see where there's an overhang over here. You're not going to get it perfect until you sand it, but sanding does a wonderful job of getting everything nice and square again. And you say, well, Donna, how did you know, you know exactly where to stop? Well, for one, I had my lines, but for another, I kept looking, and I would check, and I would check again, and I would sand a little bit, and then I would check again. Uh, that's pretty much the only way I know of to make it so that it comes out as even as I want it to come out. So then I'm going to go ahead and change my table around so I can do that rounding. Now how do I know when I'm done sanding? Well, what I do is I take one of my directional lights, and I've got a lot of these directional lights, and I hold the box up to it at an angle and I look to see if there are any marks that are deeper than the, two, than the 120 grit sandpaper. If, uh, if there are any, then it, this is the time to sand them out. Later on, you can't sand it out. Later on is too late because um, going with, uh, say, a 400 grit and trying to get rid of a 120 grit scratch is, is virtually impossible. I wanted to show you that on the large box, you pretty much cannot tell where the base is attached to the body. There's virtually no line or indicators that it's a separate piece of wood. This is the bonus box, or the box that I cut out from the core from the interior. also has some nice figure. If you have any questions, you can always get in touch with me at my website. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have.